All right, today we are going to be doing a tune-up and oil change on a 2014 Nissan. This will apply for a lot of models, the V6. So the first thing we're going to do is unclip the air cleaner. And then we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolts holding down this air snorkel here so we can get the whole assembly off. All right, now that we got that front snorkel removed, you can see that we can remove the air cleaner a bit easier. I want to go ahead and take out that mass airflow sensor there and remove the clamp there and right there and take out these two 10 millimeter bolts to remove that cover. All right, as you can see, when everything's removed, you can start to see things a little better. Just put all your screws back into the same spots where you pull them out makes it easier you do not have to remove this lower air cleaner assembly part of the box i did because it was dirty and it just shows a little more uh, view of everything for you uh, there's a screw right there and it just pops right out and it collects a lot of dust so it is good to take it out and just dump the dust out so the new filter don't get saturated now we want to start looking at everything over here you see your front bank spark plugs right there super easy to get to the next set of spark plugs are underneath the manifold so we got to start removing some things off of the manifold itself leave it connected for now we're going to take out these three 10 millimeter bolts that are holding down these different solenoids and vacuum ports and all that we want to take those off and just lay them forward all right i've already pulled the manifold but i'm going to go ahead and go through everything that was disconnected this is the easiest quickest and safest way to do this without disconnecting all the components unnecessarily. So we're gonna disconnect the throttle body here. I'm just gonna set that off to the side right there. And sorry for the glare from the sun. And then like we talked before, we had these three um, vacuum manifold things here. We disconnected all three of those, put the bolts back in there. Also the vacuum manifold. Um, rail right here that they go to pulled out the vacuum fitting out of there so that we can get it out of the way everything kind of swings back we'll take that one out so out of both the vacuum pots we're going to take the vacuum hoses out and then the one right here and take that bolt out now you should be able to lean everything now you see the manifold is clear all this was on there you just lean it back out of the way same thing with this hose, that goes down right there. I wanna go ahead and just pop that vacuum hose out, pop that one off to the side. Now you can see we have all the vacuum hoses still connected. We only disconnected two vacuum hoses, three, I'm sorry. Actually, let's take that back, four vacuum hoses. The two vacuum pots, the one big one here, and the one going up here to the back of the manifold. So once that's all disconnected, we have everything kind of out of the way now. In the back here, there's going to be a few vacuum hoses. And one of them you can get off while it's in here. And there's a bracket back there, a 10 millimeter bracket. And I'll show that once I get all this off. But you would disconnect those hoses and then pull the manifold off. You're going to have two nuts on each, well, one nut on each end for a total of two nuts. And four long bolts in the middle. Take those six out and the manifold will pop up. All right, as you can see, the manifold is off. I'm gonna get some paper towels to go ahead and line that so you don't have anything fall into your engine. All right, we're gonna look at the back of the manifold. You're gonna have this bracket here, which has a 12 millimeter bolt and then a 10 millimeter under it. And then you have two vacuum fittings. So the larger vacuum fitting on the top here, you can get off with the manifold on. The other one you can just lift out of the way and then you'll be able to get it back here. That 10 millimeter bolt is this um, AC line here. That's the only thing holding the manifold there. So just disconnect it and pop it off. That comes right off. And now you have access to your three back spark plugs. So take the three coils out, the 10 millimeter bolts, and drop the new plugs in. All right, to change the spark plugs, you're going to need a 3 8 wrench, the extension, and a 14 millimeter 
spark plug socket. These ones are the newer skinny style. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and grab your connector. I like to push in first and then pull out. And that'll release it. If not, you can get a little pick in there and pry that up. And you want to remove this 10 millimeter bolt and pull this coil out. Once the coil is out, go ahead and insert your spark plug socket. Get it firmly on there and loosen it out. All right, we have the spark plug removed. The one on the left is the OEM original Denso that came from the factory, and the one on the right is the NGK, which is a excellent replacement. This car's got about 150,000 miles on it, so you can see that these plugs have never been changed. And look at the electro gap there. It's much larger than that one. So this should quite improve the performance of the car. Go ahead and put the socket back, I mean the spark plug back into the spark plug socket and hand thread it down. Okay, once you have hand tightened the spark plug all the way down until it seats, put the ratchet on the extension and turn until it stops and go about a quarter to three eighths turn more. The procedure is the same for all the spark plugs front and rear. Go ahead and change all those now. All right, once you have the six spark plugs and six coil packs back in and secure, the next thing you're going to want to change is the PCV valve, which is back here. And that's that lower hose that was on the intake manifold. It's a 23 millimeter. Uh, you generally, they're really easy to take off. Yeah, see? Comes right off. So unscrew that and put a new PCV valve in. All right, we got the new PCV valve in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the intake manifold mating area here get all the oil off of it and everything and now would be a good time to check your gaskets normally they do not need to be changed but if yours are not in good condition go ahead and change them and then we're going to set the manifold back on its spot okay we sat the manifold down and i just finger tightened the two end nuts just to hold it in place and you want to look around make sure you have no wiring harnesses or vacuum hoses pinched underneath it Forgot to mention, now will be a great time to go ahead and clean the throttle body out. And we're going to go ahead and start putting the various components back on. And first thing you want to do is go ahead and tighten down the manifold. And do it in a crisscross pattern. It's always good. Even torque all the way across and tighten it down to specs. All right, once you have the manifold tightened back down, we're going to start working on these back two connections. The vacuum hoses there, the one from the PCV valve that we replaced up to the back, and one of the vacuum lines, I think coming off the brake booster there. And then we also want to work on that bracket right in there and put that 10 millimeter bolt back in there. Let's get all that back together. Okay, we've got the two hoses hooked back up down there and that back bracket with the 10 millimeter bolt in there. Now we're gonna work on putting this vacuum manifold assembly back on. And these wire, I mean, this metal rail, that crossover, and everything else. Okay, we put back the three vacuum solenoids. One, two, three. The two bolts for the vacuum manifold rail here, the metal one. Reconnected back the vacuum line there. Put this vacuum line back in its holder. Bolted this metal section back to the top of the manifold. And now all we're gonna do is connect the four vacuum hoses that we disconnected, the two dash pots on each side here. One, two, three, and then the fourth one was this one, but when you're putting this vacuum modulator or valve, whatever they call it, back on, you plug that in with it. So let's get all these vacuum hoses hooked back up. Once everything's hooked back up, you want to go ahead and reattach your throttle body to the intake manifold with the four Allen heads. All right, once the throttle body's bolted back in, you want to go ahead and take the intake snorkel and put it back on. It has this little piece that goes around the back of the engine. This side does not connect to anything. It's just an air silencer, and there is a little hole where this pops right into like a grommet. So just get it on there and feel around the back and pop this little silencer in there and then tighten down the one clamp that goes through the throttle body. All right, we got the intake snorkel back in. Part of the PCV system plugged back in. It just slides in and clamps down. We put the lower uh, air cleaner housing back in. 
one bolt it just pops down new air filter and on the top half of the air cleaner you're going to see the mass airflow sensor in there i like to go ahead and use mass airflow sensor cleaner do not use brake clean uh, they make a special cleaner for this i like to go ahead and clean it out along with the throttle body because during the tune-up this will all help improve the performance and gas mileage so we'll spray that out and get everything hooked back in all right we got everything hooked back up you do not need to hook up the front snorkel here yet or place the engine cover back on because we want to start it and make sure there's no weird noises or check engine lights just double check your work make sure everything is back where it's supposed to be and nothing's loose Go ahead and start the vehicle and make sure you don't hear any abnormal noises or check engine light. All right, the vehicle started right up. As you can see, it just has the oil maintenance reminder on, so we will change the oil on this. Come around to the front. And everything sounds quiet and smooth. There's no weird noises. Just let the car fully warm up and make sure you don't have a light. And that's all it is to do a tune-up on these V6 Nissans and Infinities. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.